Ghosty's finally out, which is cool. I've been waiting for a little bit. Ghosty's out. I've been on iTurn 2 for a couple years. You know, it sucks. So we're switching. I was going to look into Alacrity until I saw Ghosty, and it's by Mitchell Hashimoto. So I was like, I'm going to try Ghosty. Sounds cool. Why not? So we go over here. I'm looking at Ghosty, and uh, we can look at Mitchell Hashimoto's blog. And we see right here, it is fast, which is cool. It's got features, which is pretty sweet. And uh, Mac OS, which I'm on, and Linux. It uh, doesn't mention Windows, which honestly, I'm here for it. So yeah, it says it's fast. Go see right here, 73 milliseconds to cat the entire Japanese Bible.txt, which is sweet. I turn two, we're sitting at 470 milliseconds, which is honestly terrible. And I'm pretty sure on my machine, it feels more like a minute. So yeah, anyway, we're gonna get ghosty and uh, we're trying it out. That's basically where we're at. So, you know, you can kind of go over here to ghosty. You can click download Mac OS package, brew, install it, do your thing, right? So we have already done that. And let's look at a couple things. So configuration, ghosty claims a zero config philosophy. Basically, out of the box, you don't need a whole lot to it. Now, um, I did download Alacrity and I noticed it is not out of the box. I'm pretty sure I had about 50 different configurations with it and I kind of got tired of doing it, so I stopped. Anyway, now we're over here on Ghosty. So zero config, that's pretty awesome. File location, config, sweet, that's where it all is. Syntax, don't really care. And what else do we have? Multiple files, reloading, command comma, sweet. All right. Uh, yeah, we're not going to read any more of this. So I have brew installed Ghosty. I'm in my config. So we check it out. I do have Alacrity. Like I said, I actually tried it, but we also have Ghosty. So let's go into Ghosty. We have our config file inside of here. So if we open it up, you might be able to tell I do already have a theme, which is pretty sweet. So I have a theme already. Um, I do have a font family. I just went with nerd font because a lot of the Vim plugins do ask, hey, if you have nerd font, you can go ahead and do this. So I have nerd font. Font size, it was a little small. I made it 18. I think it came with 14. Don't quote me on that. I did notice when I first got it, you had to put these two pieces in here to copy and paste from the terminal. I'm not sure if that's required anymore. And then these I do set pretty much on every terminal emulator that I have. So pretty much if you just drag the terminal, it actually does show you right there. It says kind of your dimensions that it's at. I do like when I open a terminal for it to be pretty much the same size every single time. So right now I actually have this set to my other monitor, but that's not a big deal. I added a working directory because also when I open it, I just want to be in dev. I don't want to mess around and have to CD every single time. Now I have one keybind set up. I'll tell you what that is in a second. And these three things, again, I don't think you need all of these anymore. I'm not entirely confident. However, when you first get Ghosty at the very top up here, there's actually a directory icon since it is Mac OS native with, uh, you know, AppKit and Swift UI. It does allow you to essentially click on that and you can navigate to other directories if you want to, as if it's native Mac terminal, which is kind of cool, but you know, I don't want that. So anyway, that gets rid of it. So that is, pretty much it that's my ghosty config so speed wise same thing when we open vim it's just there it's quick looks good no issues there so if you are wondering what themes come out of the box it actually does include every single theme that comes with iterm so if you just run some sort of command like this look at that it has this really cool little ui thing that pops up and we can kind of just scroll through and look at all the different themes you might want this is actually how I ended up picking mine. I've always had the same theme and I decided to switch it up. And since I will be predominantly using this with NeoVim, I do like the fact that it has all of the code right here and the different characters and what the color palettes go with. That is pretty awesome because I do want to see what the theme's going to look like with my code. And I just recently redid my entire NeoVim config. So I also had to pick a theme and do all that kind of stuff. So I decided this is perfect. First thing with Ghosty, I'm picking a theme. And then once I picked that theme, I went ahead and applied it to my NeoVim config. And now it's the same pretty much everywhere I go. So you can look at all of the different themes if you want to. This is the one I ended up going with. Ghosty does have other commands. So if we do want to list other stuff, for example, you can look at 
actions, colors, fonts, keybinds. I did go ahead and look at the fonts as well, just to kind of see everything that's offered. And I had nerd font installed, so I went ahead and used a nerd font. Okay, so let's go back to the config really quick. And we have my single keybind set up. So this keybind might look a little weird, but it's global, so it's everywhere. And then the two keys, so it's command plus grave accent which if you don't know what that is, it's the cool little tick symbol up there, kind of near your escape button probably, something like that. Anyway, so command and that toggles a quick terminal. I do have Vim keybinds to quickly pop up a terminal, do all that kind of stuff. If you're on Tmux, you can just bounce between sessions, right? You can do whatever you want. Sometimes though, you might want essentially like a floating terminal. And I never did set up floating terminal with my NeoVim config, but Ghostly out of the box comes with this, it just comes down from the top of the screen. No matter where you are, it just comes down. So actually, if we get rid of ghosting entirely and we're just hanging out, staring at our really cool background for some reason, boom, we have a terminal. That's so cool. We can do stuff. I don't know what we do, but whatever, we can do stuff. We can bounce around. I don't know. It's kind of like a floating terminal. It's not, it's, you know, coming down from the top and it doesn't float. And honestly, I have not really used this that much. Maybe I should. I have been dabbling more with uh, C++ right now. So I'm constantly having to like build my project, right? Maybe that would be a cooler way to build it. So I'll probably have to try that. So anyway, that is my entire ghosty config. This is what it looks like and it's fast. I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but if we just open up projects, for example, it's there and we can, you know, we can bounce around. So yeah, I would say out of the box right now, Ghosty does feel very good. It feels fast. It feels responsive. All the good stuff that I'm looking for. I will say there's one other cool thing that I am kind of excited about. So if we go back to ghosty.org, I think it's under about. So if you just kind of read about it real fast, you know, you can see Mitchell Hashimoto, all this kind of stuff. We see that it's native, like we talked about. So it's written in Zig, which just means it's fast, which is cool. But it does have the AppKit and Swift UI bindings. So that's how it works so well with Mac OS. All of this to be said, it uses libghosty. So the way I guess that he developed this essentially is that he created the core library, naming it libghosty and then the terminal emulator is built from that core library now i do know he did say on a podcast that once this libghosty api is kind of more mature he does hope that other people kind of tap into it and build their own features tools applications if you will from this api so i think that'll be really cool he does talk about it down here a more diverse ecosystem so maybe once this is more mature i do hope to see that a lot of people start building really cool stuff specifically with the libghosty api and if you're already on ghosty when these things start coming out i think it'll just be really cool to watch your ecosystem grow with a lot of the stuff that you want so anyway yeah so far i think it's really cool um it's obviously really fast he said it right there and if we ever need to cat a japanese bible it will be way quicker <laughs> than the old one i term two so yeah, I am very happy I switched. I have now been using it for about four weeks or so. And so far I don't have any complaints. In fact, if we look at my config again, I have not touched this since the day that I set it up, which I will say that is probably a first for me. So anyway, definitely consider checking out Ghosty. I think it is really cool, but I also just like the project. And I think where it goes in the future is to be seen, of course. But if you look at other stuff that Mitchell Hashimoto has done, you can see it does usually blossom into something pretty awesome. Terraform, for example. So I'm excited to see what other products kind of come out of this libghosty API. All right, peace.